Good morning, Fellowship Church. Feels like it's been a year since I've seen you. Yeah. I wouldn't want you guys to miss out. Nothing's changed, really. Uh, I want to welcome you to Fellowship Church. I'm glad you guys all made it here today and braved the cold weather. Um, I'm going to start us in prayer and hand things over to Kiara and Michael. Uh, God, thank you so much for a new year and a new beginning. Um, thank you for a time to meet together. Um, thank you for working heat and uh, coziness. I just ask that uh, we could be present with you here today. Amen. Happy New Year, guys. <laughs> some things change and some things stay the same. The days are getting longer again, and we're going to worship together.
So it is good to be back after a couple weeks gone. Christine and I have been driving across the state uh, visiting family for Christmas. One of the things we really like to do uh, during our drive is listen to a marriage podcast called the Naked pa Marriage Podcast from Exo Marriage. Highly recommended. Brings up lots of good conversation. Uh, and, you know, sometimes there'll just be a random question in there to get you talking. And one of them recently was, what's your favorite vampire? I said, well, that's interesting. Mine's from Sesame Street. And Christina was skeptical. And I said, he counts. <laughs> and that was actually sent to me on Christmas Day by Perry. So uh, you know you're loved in a community when people send you dad jokes for Christmas. <laughs> anyway, I think, like I said at the beginning, a lot of things don't change. Uh, we are back to what could, considered, could be considered a normal week at Fellowship. So connections throughout the week. Monday, we have the Wise Women's Study at 11 at BAM Books in Eau Claire, and that is led by Bonnie. Tuesday night is Tacos and Prayer at the Plumasic House at 6 o'clock. 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday is Man Club, also at the Plumasics. And starting now, on Sunday nights, we're beginning to watch The Chosen here at Micon Cinemas at 6 p.m., and that's for the next eight weeks. So we'll be going through an episode of The Chosen and then the next week talking about it in church on Sunday morning. And speaking of Sunday mornings, there's the aptly named 9 o'clock hour at 9 o'clock out in the VIP lounge. So that is that. Um, yeah, we get to test this out today. We're seeing how this goes. Um, so if you're interested, show up here at 6 o'clock. Start at 6. So uh, show up here at 5.30 uh, and have supper. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, and so we are starting that today with episode one of season one. We also have traditions here at Fellowship, and one of them is sending and receiving. And for people who really love attention, this is great. For people who don't, it's great for us. So uh, Grace Halverson is heading out on an adventure as an adult. So uh, I'm going to invite her down, and we will get your family down here, too, as well. And I will hand things over to you. Oh, we still have that graphic. That is awesome. Um, but we're just sending one Halverson off. The rest are staying. And now, the last time we sent Halversons off, it's usually to somewhere warmer. <laughs> and. I'm just going to let you explain what you're doing, Grace, because, yeah, it's not warmer where she's going. Thank you. I am going on a DTS with YWAM, Discipleship Training School, um, and my base is in Norway, in a town two hours south of Oslo called Skien. Um, and I will be staying, the base is a converted prison. So that's where I'm going to be for t three months. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm barely an adult, so it's semi-scary. And COVID. So just pray for, like, smooth and, like, understanding what people want with health stuff. Um, but I'm leaving from O'Hare next Sunday at 5 p.m. And my connection's in Paris, so pray everything goes well. Uh, so I will lead us in prayer, and then I'll hand the microphone off to you guys if you uh, would like to pray. Um, God, thank you so much. Uh, it's weird uh, for me as I have been here for 12 years. It seems like... Uh, the children that were here when I started here are no longer children, and that makes me feel old. And uh, I get what everybody else has been talking about. Um, but I just ask for this heart you've put into grace. That, again, I don't think unless you called her to this, she'd be going. Uh, a prison, converted prison, a couple, uh, you know, very close to the Arctic Circle does not seem... <laughs> Uh, 
like anything else than your calling, just like Liberia was. And I thank you for uh, the witness uh, she got to see, even living in Liberia and seeing her parents answer that call. And we were talking about expectations this morning. I pray that Grace could go in with healthy expectations that you would blow out of the water. And uh, I just pray for her time there that not only would she uh, grow in her faith and uh, the skills that the discipleship training school gives, but that she would also be poured into and blessed by people there. Amen. Lord, I thank you for grace, uh, even as we were in the 9 o'clock hour together today. Uh, and she shared about this. I was thinking of how when Peggy and I got married 23 years ago, we really intended the uh, a theme of it was uh, a great adventure of your grace. And um, we can have our expectations, but here our daughter named Grace is on her great adventure. And I thank you for the gifts of leadership and influence that you have uh, built into her. She's been thinking about doing something like this for a few years, and thank you for giving her the faith and the courage to act on it, to step into it, even though she really knows no one there, and she's going by herself. Uh, just thank you that you've been preparing her with her trips to Liberia and to Guatemala and even to Minneapolis this summer on an outreach, and the way that you are forming and shaping her to work in her and through her just to mold and shape her and her relationship with you and to influence uh, the outer world. So thank you for Youth with a Mission and this particular school. And while their intentional mission ground was Israel, it may be Israel, it may be somewhere else, but it's going to be presumably somewhere outside of Norway. And so uh, thank you for the team there ready to receive her. We, yes, COVID presents plenty of challenges. She needs to be tested within 24 hours of, so sometime after 5 next Saturday and get an immediate result to... Uh, be able to get on the flight. So uh, we just, uh, there are no lack of challenges. And so we just commit it all into your hands and uh, ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide every step of the way until she returns in late June. In Jesus' name, amen. There is no way I'm going there. It's all right. Sometimes the Spirit moves and you just got to Anyway, uh, the last thing I have is it is the new year, and um, I want to take some time to pray for our new year and bless our new year uh, as a community. Um, so if you join with me in prayer, God, thank you so much uh, for another year. But what I think is most important is that you know what each and every day holds for every one of us. Lord, we want this year to be a great year, one of growth and adventure and trial and fellowship. Help us focus in on the next 24 hours and have us build those 24 hours into something amazing that we'll be able to look back on, be proud of, and be amazed by. Amen. All right, folks. Stand or sit or whatever is conducive to your worship experience. Lots of exciting changes coming up, huh?
me? Yep, awesome. Nice job. What's really funny is I had that thought, those thoughts in my head as I was preparing for today's service, and I was looking for the scriptures to back it up, and they're all over, but there wasn't one concise piece, so it's really funny. I was thinking of the song, but not the, that the text is based upon. Anyway, welcome to Fellowship Church. We're going to be studying 1 Peter 2, and it's uh, that we as God's people are a uh, royal priesthood, a holy nation. And I wanted to think about that as a community and what it implies or what God is calling us into or has set before us as an image or a model to, to follow after. But before I get there, this is how I got to what I was thinking about is, have, how many of you guys have seen the latest Spider-Man? Yes, okay. So in it, there's this sign or this symbol or this saying that it's, this is what we do. And there's two different uh, times that it happens. I don't know if you guys remember this. Uh, Isabel and JL reminded me of this one. So uh, Aunt May is, is working in like the Salvation Army and uh, like it's a food pantry and she's serving people. And Peter is lamenting about, you know, how hard it is. And she says, this is what we do. We just help people. We serve people. That's what we do. And then later, I'm going to spoil a little bit, but I think you've seen any commercials, you'll see that they've integrated these two other Spider-Mans within it, and so this is multiverse, it's a long story, but the Spider-Men, when they come together, defeat the enemies, and no one is killed. Um, Tom Holland's character goes to the other two, and they, he's thanking them, thank you for doing this, and he's, they say, well, that's just what we do. That's just what we do. And that's been ringing in my head, or at least my heart. What, what is it that we do? And, and so my question for you, and I've got my answers, but my question for you, I want you to think about this, and, and I'm going to ask you to, to say it out loud, but what are the top three activities or behaviors that indicate you follow Jesus? Okay, just top three activities or um, behaviors that indicate to you that you are following Jesus. Okay, anyone first thing come to mind? Obedience. obedience okay. Love. What love? Okay, awesome. Love, obedience, prayer. Okay, I had one more that I thought you were going to do. Obedience wasn't one, but not that I disagree. I'm just saying I didn't anticipate it. Well, I did, but it's a whole another story. But anyway. What's, a, what's another one? The other thing. What are we known for? What? We're here. Gathering. Okay. I wanted to say that. I didn't, but I didn't think it would make the top three. But yeah, what did you say? Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Okay. I thought that would be in there, but I didn't put it in the top three. My t other top three, this is what my guesses were. Uh, love well, and that's because of Andrea. Um, serve others, um, and then pray. That's what I thought. That was my expectations. Not that the other, again, I, I wanted these are the things. So if you look at the life of Jesus, and the way you do that is you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you look at the life of Jesus throughout those stories, Jesus shows love, is loving, but is not always acting nice. And so sometimes when we say the word love, it gets confusing. I love a good cup of coffee. Jesus loves the lost sinner, you know kind of confusing. Anyway, so he shows love, but is not always acting nice. Jesus prays, but isn't always on his knees praying. And Jesus serves others, but he's not always serving everyone. So there are indications of what he does, but it's, I think something deeper, something more powerful. Matthew 16 24 and 28, and I think Tim is, he might be reading the cliff notes, I don't know. This is out of the message. When Jesus went to work on his disciples, he says, quote, anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat, I am. Don't run from suffering, embrace it. Follow me, and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, 
to finding yourself, your true self? What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but to lose yourself? What could you ever trade for your soul? Verse 27. Don't be in such a hurry to go into business for yourself. Before you know it, the Son of Man will arrive with all of the splendor of his Father, accompanied by an army of angels. You'll get everything you've got coming to you, a personal gift. This isn't pie in the sky by and by. Some of you standing here will not, or <laughs> some of you standing here are going to see it take place, the Son of Man in the kingdom glory. So my epiphany for me as I was preparing for this, it's kind of in Tim's vein, is that following Jesus isn't leading. Following isn't leading. And to go where he takes you. Again, grace um, is doing that. Again, for those of us who think or know where Iceland or Norway is. Again, some of us love the cold weather, not this guy. <laughs> I know. Um, but to go there, that has to be somebody else. To go to Liberia has to be something else. You're not doing it because it's on your bucket list. Maybe it was. I don't know. I don't think so. But you're doing it out of obedience. And you're doing it because you believe that God has invited you or asked you to go. So you go where he takes you. You are not in the driver's seat. Then it says, don't run from suffering. Don't simply take the easy and soft way. Many times in my journey with God, I'm always looking at, well, this can't be the way because it is so stinking hard. It can't be the way. If God, if God wanted me to go there, he'd like, you know, grease the skids, knock out all the obstacles. Pff, I'm going to make this happen, you know. But that has not been my experience. Not that he can't do it or doesn't do it occasionally. But more often than not, the way I know the path that I'm supposed to go on is based on the amount of obstacles. It's almost as if. The more obstacles that are between me and there, it, it affirms the path. It tells me that something inside of me, my compass is guiding me in this direction. And because it's an obstacle, I know that there's a path that it is blocking. Following Jesus is not leading Jesus. It's not telling Jesus, oh, this is what I've th we're supposed to do today. You know, it's 1030. You know, I should be in my next transition. It's following him, keeping in step with the spirit, and allowing your life to no longer be your own. Because we have been bought with a price. Jesus, follow Jesus, and he will show us how to address these burdens and endure the suffering. Follow Jesus, and he will enable you, equip you to fulfill the, this dream or the vision that he is calling you into. He says, again, take my burden upon you, because his burden is light, and his way or his yoke is easy. It isn't, there is no yoke. It's just a lot less uh, destructive than the other yokes we tend to carry. That verse that I'm quoting is actually based on Jeremiah 6.16. It says, God's message, yet again, go stand at the crossroads and look around. Ask for directions to the old road, the tried and true road, and then take it. Discover the right road for your souls. But they said, nothing doing. We're not going that way. The prophet Jeremiah was speaking to God's people, and he, he was encouraging them to come back to their love of God, to listen to the text that God had given them, to fulfill what God had asked them to do and become the people 
that God's people were intended to become. But God's people said, no, nothing doing. We are not going that way. We're going to go our way. That way is full of obstacles. Nothing but suffering. I am not going that way. And I think we have a ring, at least in my own ears, when I hear that. I talked about Shalom, this God of peace and holistic integration, this this way of peace that integrates heaven and earth, wind and sky, our souls, our bodies, our community into step with the spirit in God's design. That's what I'm talking about. It's much bigger than just stop throwing fists. And then there's a price that we pay for taking this other road, and it's the price of disintegration, of dissipation, where the spirit that had enlivened you or given you courage and hope and strength seems to be diminishing and in uh, being mitigated. Again, we talked about this idea of gathering the, the fire together, and then if you want to put out a fire, you scatter the coals. And I know that those coals, some coals go out because they don't have the the synergy of the other coals to gain heat from, to gain strength from. In the Catholic Church where I grew up, we had this phrase, we said it every weekend, Christ had died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. This is the like the main points of the whole gospel message. Christ has died. He's died for us to make a way for you and I to be set right with him. And God the Father amended that sacrifice by raising him from the dead, and he has become the first fruit of that integrated wholeness where God said, yes, this is the way for humanity to behave. This is the way it's going to be done by a faithful son following after his God, his father's prompting. And then Christ will come again. This Lord Jesus, come. We wait in eager anticipation with all of creation for the restoration of our souls and all of creation. Jesus is going to return to fulfill the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And a part of that is the no more tears. Part of that is there'll be an end to tyranny and an end to suffering. Unmistakable glory. There's not going to be any doubt. You've heard rumors that so-and-so is Jesus. He's returned again. I don't know if you've heard any of this, but there's guys always through time that they claim to be Jesus. He's bringing his kingdom, and then it always goes south or sideways. It will be unmistakable. Scripture says every knee will bow and every tongue to confess. What that means to me is everyone who sees will know. There will be no more questions. All of your questions will be completed. And all of us will know without a doubt. My question is, when Jesus returns Whose business will you be doing? What will you be about? Where will you spend your time? What will he find you doing? Will you be asleep? Will you be hell-bent? The Apostle Paul, writing to the letter, a letter to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 through 5, again, the message. He's saying, don't imagine us leaders to be something we aren't. We are servants of Christ, not his master. We are guides into the God's divine secrets, not security guards posted to protect them. The requirements for a good guide are reliability and accurate knowledge. It matters very little to me what you think of me 
even less where I rank in popular opinion. I don't even rank myself. Comparisons in these matters are pointless. I'm not aware of anything that would disqualify me from being a good guide to you, but that doesn't really mean much. The master, Jesus, makes that judgment. So don't get ahead of the master and jump to conclusions with your judgments before all the evidence is in. When he comes, he will bring out the open, he will bring out in the open the places and evidence of all kinds of things we have ever even dreamed of. Inner motives and purposes and prayers. Only then will any of us get to hear the well done of God. The single clearest indication that you are following Jesus is he is leading you. The singlest, clearest indication that you are following Jesus is that he is leading you. I am blessed with some young people in my household, JL and is who were like, when I asked the questions, they're like, you can't compare in contrast. It's not about, oh, I'm doing so much better than you, and you're doing so much better than me. Again, that's why I put in the text. Comparisons in these matters are pointless. It doesn't matter what I think or anyone else thinks about you and your walk with Jesus. It's between you and him. And he's the only one that we really need to worry about. Either Jesus is Lord or he's not. Can I get John 4.34? When I first uh, surrendered to ministry, I had this up on my screensaver on my computer. I did not want to become what I hated. I didn't want to make it about me and asking for God to bless my plans because I had done that for most of my previous life. Jesus said his food was to do the will of his Father. His very nourishment and to complete his work. We've talked about Peter, and Jesus was saying, who, who do the people say that I am? And they thought he was a prophet and many things. And then Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you're the rock, you're the Christ, you're the Messiah, you're the one. And Jesus said, you are right, Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And then we get confused because Peter, Cephas, his, his name in the Greek was rock, and so that's where popes come from and leadership comes from. And then the Protestants say, oh, no, that can't be right. It's Jesus, and I think that is true. And in First Peter, he says, we are all stones, and we're built on the cornerstone that is Christ. And then that next stone is built and added to him. On this rock, he builds his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. So again, I want to be specific. What does that mean? Does that mean that we get to um, pr protect and armor ourselves up? We get to put this hedge of protection around us, and no evil is going to enter this room or my household or my children's households? No. 
It means that on this rock, he's building his church, his gathered people, and the gates of hell cannot pre pay, uh, prevail against it. The gates of hell are barred, and God's people can open those gates. We can go anywhere. We can address any problem. There is no evil that is more powerful than the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why Renee goes to strip clubs to bring the gospel there. Not us guys, but women going to there. And that's why we did Theology on Tap. That's why we did Give Us a Shot. That's why we brought in recovery addicts. That's why we did the ho homeless housing. That's why we do Touch Twice. That's why we do Teamwork Africa. That's why we do Salvation Army. That's why we do Bikers for Christ. Because we can go anywhere. And the gates of hell cannot prevail. I'm going to ask our communion folks to start going. And I, I want you to focus on the, that Jesus only did what the Father told him to do. His food was to do the will of him who sent him and to accomplish, to fulfill his work. What is it that God has asked you to do? Where has he asked you to go? Who is he asking you to become? First thing you should think of are obstacles. Thank you. First thing, you should have a thousand obstacles to tell me why this can't be God. There has to be another way. There's got to be somebody holier, somebody smarter. It can't be God. Too many obstacles. It'll cost too much money. I'm not educated can't be God. Think about it. Think about what that is. We're about to celebrate communion together. And we do it together to gain strength. And we eat the bread and drink the cup to get nourishment so that whatever that next obstacle that's in front of you, you have the courage and the strength to address. And this war, again, Teamwork, teamwork Africa mainstay is not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. I'm not asking you to go in and slaughter anything, anyone. I'm asking you to go speak the truth of Jesus, wherever that is, and encourage others to join you. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. And he... will be with you. I'll split it with this. We got one? Yeah, okay, thanks. Communion. The night before Jesus was to be betrayed, he gathered his disciples those who were following him, those who he had called. Again, tonight we're going to be here called by name. And he broke the bread. He said, this represents my body. And it's going to be broken for you and for many so that sins, all of our falling short, will be covered.
and it come, came with suffering. And he didn't run from it. He embraced it. So let's eat the bread and remember in whose spirit we come. Then he took the cup again, he gave thanks, and he prayed. He said, this cup represents my blood, and it's going to be poured out for you and for many, so that every time we fall short, every time, any time, it will be covered. When we gather together, we're supposed to drink the cup and remember that price that's paid. I'm going to pray. I'm going to invite Kiara and Michael back. Father God, we thank you for your son. We thank you for your calling to us to invite us into this kingdom of heaven. God, I thank you for grace. I thank you for her. Yes, Lord. I thank you for her parents and their <laughs> examples of yes, Lord. I thank you for Andrea and Izzy and their examples of, yes, Lord. We seem to be sending out more uh, and more. And so, Lord, we even thank you for that, that we are being obedient and faithful to you. God, I pray for your spirit to speak to us as individuals. That we would look to see, are we following you or are we trying to lead you? I pray that you would give us each that next right step. Make it clear. And whatever obstacle seems to be in our way, Lord, we pray in your name. Not by power and not by might, but by your spirit. You would show us a way up, over, through, under, or around. But that you would lead us. Father, I pray this in your name. Amen. All right, folks. Let's go ahead and go into worship together.
Thank you all for coming out and braving the cold. Um, again, tonight, 6 o'clock, we're going to be turning on the screen, and uh, we have a small uh, question, like a Bible study afterwards. We're praying that God's going to open these doors. So uh, we've got some people who are willing to host. Uh, if you can't make it, we're going to try to spread that out. Uh, but I believe this is the, the best picture of Jesus that I have seen, and um, we want to see if other people can fall in love again. Uh, go out and love and serve the Lord. If we can pray for you, let me know. Thanks.